When I had the excavators over here the other day, while we were waiting on the rock truck to come, I had him come and push down a bunch of big oak trees. Now these oak trees are huge. They're old, but unfortunately they are dead. And um, I, well, I hated to see them go. Beautiful, beautiful oak trees. Probably 100, 150 year oak trees. This one's about 60 feet tall. And it's got to go. If I take it out myself, it's going to be a stump left. So just a no-brainer to have them take it out while they're here. This is Eddie's Backhoe and Dozer Service from Jacksonville, Texas. They did my pond work. If you don't know uh, what I'm talking about with the pond work, if you haven't seen those two videos of the restoration of the pond and fixing a huge hole in my dam, then you need to look up in the uh, right-hand corner right about now, and that's be a link to those uh, videos. They just did a marvelous job. But while he was here, I had him push down these trees. First, they dig around them to break the roots. If these trees were alive, they would do more extensive digging to try to break the roots out. But these trees have been dead for some time, so it's not a big deal. Just dig a little bit around them and then push them down. This tree was pretty good size, probably not as tall as the first tree, but a lot bigger in diameter. Now this tree here is a tree that's been dead several years. Probably didn't need to dig around it even though he did. He didn't really know how long it had been dead. But he dug around it and pushed it down. It pushed down real easily. I was just scared to get up under it because as you could see, the, the limb falling down like that could have fell down on me and that's just not a good thing. This tree right here is probably a good 60 feet tall. Big, big tree. Dug around it quite a bit because it was, uh, this is probably his first year. It probably died or just didn't come out this spring. Comes down with a crash. It's a big, big tree. I'm gonna have lots and lots of firewood, for sure. He move it out of the way. After every tree he pushed down, he would come back and uh, rake the dirt off of it and rake it back in the hole, tamp it down real good where I won't have a big unsightly hole that my tractor would fall in or get stuck in or something like that. And I just appreciate the way he did this. Didn't really ask him to do it. And I asked him to just, for these trees, to just lay them down. Just throw them down on the ground because I was going to cut them up for firewood. Now this set of trees, it's a clump of three trees. And he's digging around them pretty good bit because they are live. Even though they are smaller trees. And then push them down. Something he did on these trees, the live trees that he pushed down, is dig around the root ball. Uh, try to get as much dirt off that root ball as you can. It's very hard to burn trees when they have a big root ball full of dirt. It just, it's really hard for them to burn. You, you're left with a stump with a lot of dirt in it to try to get rid of, and uh, it's just really not the optimal situation. So he's stripping the dirt off of the root balls the best he can, and then he'll take them to the burn pile. And what he does in the burn pile, I'll show you. He, he's creating a burn pile. So I'll show you what he does to help me out. I didn't ask him to do it, but he did it anyway. Scraping that dirt off the root ball. It's gonna make it a lot easier for me to be able to, to burn. Now this one, he didn't even dig around it much. Maybe one or two little places. Now some of you would ask, why would I push down live trees? The other trees were dead, these are live. Why would I do that? Well, this is j just on the back side of my dam. My dam had a huge hole in it. And I believe that hole was caused by uh, trees over the years. I had some trees real close to the dam at one point. And those roots go looking for water, especially on an elm like the one he just pushed down. The roots go looking for water. They, they, they search out water and they'll go straight through a dam looking for the pond water. Well, once that happens, then that water starts seeping around that root 
and after a while it will leak through the root and, and just form a bigger and bigger hole around that root and pretty soon you've got a big, big hole. These trees were pretty close to my dam and I wanted to make sure that they were out of there and did not cause me any problems years from now with their roots getting into my dam. It's amazing how much weight that uh, excavator will pick up. These trees are, again, that's some three trees kind of in a clump together. They were unsightly anyway. Um, and the way he can just pick those things up, those are green, which means they're heavy. Those are hackberry trees. Again, heavy, heavy. Now here he is piling those trees up in a burn pile for me, just creating a burn pile away from the dam that I will get to in a little while, burn it all up. But what he's doing, I didn't ask him to do this, but he's cutting the trees up, breaking them off kind of, and then bending them back on themselves and pulling them back in the pile. That's just a good thing for him to be doing. Again, didn't ask him to do that, but you can tell he's done this before and he knows how to create a burn pile that will burn well and quick. So he's gotten the most of the dirt off the root ball. He's, he's piling it up to where the, uh, the trees are all in one spot. They're not scattered out. You don't have a 50 foot tree laying there and you're trying to, to burn it up and you have to wind up pushing the trees up. And this is the pile when he got through with it. This is a, maybe a week or so later when everything's kind of kind of dead, not green anymore. And uh, just a beautiful burn pile. Uh, that will be easy to burn. I'll wait for it to get a little bit drier, and then I'm going to tear it up. All right. We're gone.